about this topic, so I will present it instead of him. And uh, <clears throat> there are basic problem uh, existing detonation initiation. So <clears throat> uh, still, uh, after many years, uh, many decades of uh, research, uh, there is uh, many uh, models, uh, ideas, what happened on microscopic level, or mesoscop uh, mesoscopic too, uh, in, uh, which leads to in initiation or ignition of the uh, high explosive, or condensed high explosive. So in this talk, we will focus on the porous explosive, and we'll try to make, uh, as a uh, final step, to do mesoscopic simulation. But as a first step, we want to just uh, do some preliminary atomistic simulation to, do, to, to, to find the equation of state, uh, reaction rates, and all chemistry uh, on an atomic level, molecular level. So, <clears throat> uh, the major idea behind the, the uh, uh, ignition, uh, which may describe ignition uh, in the all kind of practical high explosive material or energetic material, which are not uh, uh, ideal crystal, which always have some imperfection in form of the grains, voids, and so on. So that the uh, ignition happens uh, through the uh, initiated or started from, from the formation of the so-called hot spot. So hot spot usually associated with uh, some small pore uh, or small void between grains. <clears throat> uh, uh, this is the size of uh, maybe micrometer or even 100 nanometers. And this pore may, uh, may lead to formation of the high temperature spot after, after, comp after compression or, and collapse of this pore. This idea uh, has a long history and still because the uh, complexity of direct simulation, mesoscopic simulation of such uh, samples, uh, there is uh, many uncertainty about uh, <clears throat> how, what the mechanism are behind of this uh, uh, heating. Of course, the collapse is a just general thing, but uh, some uh, void can be uh, produ can produce uh, uh, additional heating and uh, transfer to uh, a detonation way, but some, one, some pores may be very enough small pores, may just simply collapse and do not uh, uh, cause any effect. So here I show that uh, our first uh, hydrodynamic simulation, not atomistic simulation, but with hydrodynamic simulation using smooth particle hydrodynamics code, was performed on the basis of atomistic simulation. So uh, all chemistry here, all uh, reaction rate, equation of state was taken into, uh, was <clears throat> obtained from the uh, first step of the simulation, and molecular dynamic simulation of uh, some uh, uh, model energetic material we call uh, AB. You may think it's just NO atoms. I will tell you about it later. So, Hotspot, uh, <clears throat> the, uh, the term hotspot actually means a class uh, of the objects which may lead to the initiation or ignition of detonation. Uh, it's just simply if you go to a restaurant, they ask, I want to fish. <laughs> Maybe no one understood you well. So because uh, fish ex itself uh, has a very different sort of fish. So, and, in, uh, and uh, we have to think in the same way, uh, same way for meaning of hotspot. If you talk hotspot, we definitely ask first in what condition this hotspot was formed. And the evolution, the life of this hotspot, will it survive or will it uh, die uh, soon, will depend much, will depend on the uh, initiate, um, environment condition or the type or class of this hotspot. So the simplest, uh, I'll discuss it about uh, classification later, and itself classification, uh, as I said, is important. And uh, uh, yeah, there are some 
<clears throat> yeah, it's some exam example. So uh, pore collapse will lead to formation of one type of the hot spot, but laser heating will provide another type of hot spot. So in laser heating, we have uh, some high temperature, maybe in hot spot produced by pore collapse, low temperature, but high pressure, quite different condition. And the life of this uh, hot spot will, uh, two different hot spots, will be quite different. And the critical condition, it will die or expand uh, infinitely, uh, will also depend on such class or type of hotspot. So <clears throat> you see, that I, I, I'll, I'll say a few words about this simulation. Uh, the porous material just consists of the uh, spherical pore here. They are not shown here. It's just a shadow of, image, shadow of wall three-dimensional sample. So pore size will realistic about 50 microns and same length 10 millimeters. Of course, such dimension sizes are not achievable in uh, molecular dynamics, uh, atomistic approach. But uh, <clears throat> here, as I said already, that all chemistry taken from the uh, molecular dynamics simulation. You see that the wave, initial wave propagate without actually heating here, the temperature uh, remains cold. However, after a uh, collapse of few, several pores you need to see here. So the reaction initiated somewhere here, far from the piston, by the way, and detonation just direct in, uh, in the forward direction is initiated here, and backward detonation wave also initiated from the, this area where the ensemble of hot spot was quite strong to produce this transition to detonation regime. So, the outline of talk. So, first, classification of hotspot. I already said that uh, it's uh, really uh, required to understand uh, that uh, various uh, ignition scenario. So, <clears throat> uh, actually, a classification still, uh, we don't have a good classification in literature. Uh, the idea of classification, of course, kind of in air. And, but uh, uh, usually experimentalists do, uh, do some kind of conclusion. We, we, pre, we, may, we cook this, this, this kind of hotspot in that such condition. Maybe we cook another hotspot in another condition, but uh, theoretical classification still is lacking. So then I will show some uh, MD simulation of uh, two classes, more, or I think uh, most uh, important classes of hotspot is produced by fast laser heating. So, and then uh, this is a kind of hot, hot spot. <laughs> so, and then another hot spot produced by collapse of the pore. So, produced by external pressure or, or shock compression. And finally, uh, just conclusion and uh, you know, further work. So, to transition to, from atomistic level to hydrodynamic level of simulation. Okay, <clears throat> the simplest and I think very uh, natural uh, classification of hot spot can be based on the characteristic times of the major process driving or guiding this process of formation of hot spot. First is the reaction time. It's quite a general uh, like, uh, kind of the definition. I will talk, tell you about definition of characteristic, of characteristic time later. Of course, it's not simple uh, quantity because it must include uh, uh, major uh, chemical reactions uh, initiated in the uh, uh, explosive. But we may derive it or uh, even obtain it in experimental condition. So heating time, of course it's clear that the hot spot produced by laser or electric spark may um, uh, control it by the heat. Slow heating or fast heating will give us different results and acoustic time or sound wave time. Uh, typically, it is associated with the radius of uh, hot spot and the sound speed in the material, clearly. So it uh, determines the, uh, how fast reaffection re wave uh, unload with uh, hot spot or how fast uh, compression or shock wave propagate inside. Anyway, so <clears throat> the combination of these two, uh, of this three uh, characteristic time may give us about uh, six uh, class or six type of hotspot. 
But however, uh, I will just focus on two types of hotspots, that the uh, heating time much lower, uh, much less than the acoustic time. Of course, if heating time much uh, longer than acoustic time, then actually we cannot really pro uh, pro uh, produce a good uh, hot spot because unloading wave will release the pressure and uh, it may be just some class of hot spot will never survive. Okay, anyway, so uh, time of heating much less, uh, reaction time and acoustic time. This is one of sort one of kind of hot spot. So <clears throat> it produce uh, it produce fast heating, decomposition and hydrodynamic flow. So and uh, oh here just one example, sorry. It's a one kind of hot spot. Is the reaction time much less than acoustic time? Then much less. So the reaction uh, it's probably opposite. Reaction time should, if reaction time is here, it should re re replace growth here and extinction here. Is acoustic time much shorter than reaction time? Then uh, much shorter. Okay, then it, it will be, uh, lead to extinction. So we have a hot spot produced by uh, laser heating, but due to unloading, fast unloading temperature, a reaction have no time to produce a temperature. So it should be replaced, the growth here and extension here. And the opposite uh, case is the reaction is very short, so unloading wave cannot reach the center of the hot spot. Then reaction will complete, release a lot of energy, and hot spot survive and start to expand. Okay. So <clears throat> here, as I said, uh, two type major type uh, of the hotspot. So uh, uh, the fast heating, fast heating in this area, so the boundary, bit, uh, contact between uh, reagent material, so initial material here and hotspot here. So he fast heating results in the high pressure there and high temperature here. So density remains a constant, just the isochoric heating because of too fast. So another hot spot here. So uh, slow heating in mechanical equilibrium. So we, we have a, but because mechanical equilibrium, low density here, uh, and the pressure is just constant. But they have a high temperature, very high temperature here. Slow heating in mechanical equilibrium. Yeah, OK. So let's first try to simulate, to sh I will show the simulation of the uh, cylindrical hotspot produced by fast heating. It means uh, heating is much shorter than the acoustic time, unloading time of hotspot. And uh, yeah, first I will discuss about the, what potential, what the uh, forces acting between uh, atoms. <coughs> Uh, about two decades ago, the uh, very simple uh, classical interatomic potential for the reactive material, react, uh, which may include, uh, which includes uh, valency, uh, chemical bonds of, uh, between atoms, was developed by Brenner and Koffer, so on this year. So um, this potential is quite uh, actually simple and uh, consists of two parts. For chemical bond, we have a very deep wheel, very energetic, 2 EV, uh, presented by Morse potential, short range potential. And for large distance uh, between molecules, actually, we have a, a Van der Waals force based using uh, Leonard Jones potential. Uh, actually, quite simple. There is a, another uh, important thing is the bond <coughs> order. I show next slide, but I would like to say that this potential. AB called some kind of AB potential or reactive, reactive empiric bond order potential play same place exactly same role as a, a Leonard Jones potential, which probably everyone everyone knows very well. So Leonard Jones potential is good for just theoretical 
study of a question of state, evaporation, shock wave, many things just to understand on an atomic level what happened inside the material. But uh, uh, Leonard Jones potential has no uh, uh, has no way to select I will, uh, this atom will connect to this one atom, like make a bond, and uh, bond should saturate at valency, a given valency, and in order to include it, the, the valency in uh, uh, classical MT, we uh, Brenner Sliskofer in, introduced bond order, so. If one atom close to another atom, then this uh, assume valency one. Valency is saturated, and all, uh, all third, fourth atoms cannot uh, contact and make chemical bond with a central atom. It's clear. So it's not simply uh, it's not a simple actually uh, function, but uh, it's a very effective uh, from <laughs> computational point of view potential. It's just about two, three times. Uh, has a low speed, calculation speed than the Leonard Jones potential. Okay, here, okay, Van der Waals term for a system uh, energy of uh, atomic system. Van der Waals force is a long range uh, forces, uh, repulsive forces, repulsive forces, and the attractive force which depends on bond order. If bond order just one, then uh, attractive force is large. It means uh, we may make uh, atom may make uh, chemical uh, bond. If it's just a zero, it's just eliminate attractive force and only repulsive is, is active. Okay. Okay. About uh, characteristic time of chemical reaction, uh, you know that the, uh, in a real energetic material or explosive, there are a lot, I mean, thousands of maybe hundreds of thousand reactions. Of course, there are very some virtual reaction. Uh, but uh, it's uh, not no way to include in uh, uh, a realistic uh, a simulation uh, a program, include all of them. And uh, uh, it, the problem even deeper, we may write many equations, so thousands of equations, kinetic equations. However, we also, in order to con uh, con um, Close the system. We need uh, also to provide uh, equation of state of each species. So it's an equation of state of the some radicals and other radicals. And now another uh, intermediate uh, some uh, active molecules. So it's really not uh, uh, no any way to do this. And uh, typically, people that just combine all of reaction as a. Uh, uh, initial uh, reagent material products and <coughs> reaction uh, intermediate reaction like like radicals here in simply uh, are they visible a star b star so this a uh, reaction uh, this uh, uh, interaction between b and uh, atom and a b may result in formation molecule and uh, prod production of the radical atoms radicals are important they are very important in the initiation of the uh, <clears throat> chain of reaction, pro pro production of the uh, uh, release of energy. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but your talk's only 25 minutes, yeah. and you've nearly taken 20 oh. already. All right, thank you. So, I will finish yeah. soon. Yeah. Okay, so then uh, the reaction in the, in the hot spot, uh, uh, were all combined to the uh, isochoric thermal decomposition time. In the isochoric heating condition, uh, the time is measured when the uh, product of the uh, product are formed. So this time will depend on the density, initial density, and uh, initial density and initial temperature. So doing this way, we may uh, extract a kin kinetical equation for the, um, to use in the, uh, in the hydrodynamic code. Oh, okay, so fast heating of cylinder. So initially it was heated here, pressure jump, temperature jump here, and then expand star. What we may say just uh, uh, in brief, that acoustic time of hot spot is quite uh, about 10 picosecond. It's much 
smaller than uh, heating time. It means the hot spot uh, produced uh, by laser heating will expand long time, and the reaction may have time to just complete and release the energy. So, and uh, just from the such simple thing, we may just uh, derive that the critical radius of this hot will be order, not equal here, but order, that the sound speed on reaction time. It means that uh, uh, if the radius will be low, then the, uh, this critical uh, radius, then unloading wave will come to the center faster than the reaction will happen. And then it uh, kill unloading will wave kill the reaction, the, uh, drop the temperature, and the reaction will stop. OK. In here, the profile of the uh, radial profile of velocity and density uh, in unloading wave, uh, reflection of convergent wave coming to the center. So at time 8 picosecond, wave reaches center, reflection wave. Conversion reaffection wave. It starts to reflect from the center. Reaffection wave starts to refle reflect from the center, produce another new reflect, uh, reflected reaffection wave. Reflected reaffection wave will lead to formation of inflow. You see the negative here, velocity. Produce the densification of central part. It may, uh, it may result in decrease of density here. And density, as I shown you before, uh, high density uh, provide a good uh, uh, chance to for development of uh, reaction ignition of this point. Okay. So next. So critical radius here. Uh, in such condition, we found that critical radius uh, of the hot spot is about 23 nanometers. So these uh, small radius, uh, 21 died, hotspot uh, dies here, then it's expand and uh, uh, is a, what is this product? Is a product, uh, cycle is a product, and dash line is a density. So because densification at this point happened at the center, you see the density jump due to reflection of reaffection wave from the center. Densification may, you see, change uh, slope of this uh, uh, production of the uh, production of the uh, you know, final state of molecules, and then it starts to accelerate. So it finally, we found that, that such condition may really happen uh, in the um, such hot spot. Okay, so let's skip it. And few words about uh, hot spot uh, after collapse. So shock compression of the material, shock compression, that low compression uh, amplitude will never produce any reaction. It's too, too small for the, this material. However, we have a pore. The collapse may result in the increase of pressure at the center, you see, and that it depends on radius. Here, a radius uh, was a 16 nanometer, uh, 12, 12, 14, 16 nanometer. So the critical radius is uh, uh, at the 14 nanometer. So if a pressure will be uh, will exceed some critical limit, I guess uh, about 10 GPA, somewhere here, or 11 GPA. So the initiation um, pressure and temperature inside the center will be uh, large enough in, uh, to produce a reaction. Here's some just repeating that the, uh, we need an, uh, uh, maybe 1% of uh, radicals at the center produced by the collapse in order to uh, give a chance uh, collapse to form a uh, living hot spot. Okay. And then in conclusion. So what we did, uh, maybe, uh, yeah, we did uh, some, some preliminary classification of the hot spot based on the characteristic time of the major process guiding of evolution of hot spot. And uh, the critical condition for hot spot generated by fast heating uh, uh, is acceleration of the exothermic reaction due to re uh, reflection of the reaffection wave coming to the center. That uh, reflect, make uh, additional uh, densification at the center, which results, uh, which triggers uh, chemical reaction. 
and then hotspot survive and start to grow. And the collapsing pore leads to higher pressure. Uh, if the pressure is enough to produce a high concentration of radical atoms, then uh, it supports, I mean, the <clears throat> hotspot start to grow and the uh, reaction accelerated just at the center of the uh, pore. And uh, at the future world, and I already show some preliminary in the beginning of my talk, SPH simulation. So we want to make a mesoscopic simulation, include many pores, and use a, a atomistic uh, based uh, reaction rates, equation of state, in order to make a combined and consistent uh, simulation on the atomistic level and the hydrodynamic level. Thank you very much.